This week, I am on Yamaha's YZF R6. Louise is on this. And Rod is on this. Hello and welcome to Bike File with me, Wazza. You join us again this week at Donington Park, where I'm here on a Speed Freaks track day with Yamaha's R6. Now this bike may look all coy and unassuming, like butter wouldn't melt in its mouth, sat here on the side stand. But do not be fooled for a minute, because this is one of the maddest two-wheeled experiences there is, this side of a turbo Hayabusa on an ice rink. If you want to buy one of these, you better be prepared to give it a damn good thrashing, because really, pottering about is not this little buzz bomb strong point. Pussyfooters, wallflowers, and Sunday strollers need not apply. You see, where other bikes in the Supersport 600 class offer creature comforts like motors with useful mid-range, plush seating and billion accommodation you can actually use alongside their more sporting abilities, the R6 packs its power into a firecracker top end, scrunches you up like a racer once you're on the bike and offers you pillions of perch with all the security of the average big top trapeze. She's the most sharply focused bike in the Supersport 600 class and that is that. On paper, the R6 might look quite a lot like the rest of the class. It's got 102 brake horsepower at the back wheel, it weighs 167 kilos, and the top speed is a genuine 160 mile an hour. But these figures only tell half the story. The R6's motor may make the same power as the competition, give or take a PHP or two, but the way that power comes in puts it worlds apart from compatriots like the Sedate CBR or the mid-range ZX6. Quite simply, below 7,000 RPM, the Yamaha's power delivery is flatter than a pancake that's been run over by a steamroller with a very fat man in it. In the greater scheme of things, there is naff all going on in the engine room. Low down throttle response is pretty iffy as well. Add in a gearbox that engages the lower ratios with a noise as loud as someone smacking the engine cases with a lump hammer, and this is a bike that doesn't make pottering through town the easiest work in the world. However, get a wound up and explore the top end of the taco and you probably won't care about any of this. By 10 grand, the bike's coming on song as the rasp starts in the airbox beneath your chin and that pipe starts to howl. Even standard R6s sound absolutely gorgeous. And then from 12 grand to 15,000 is where the real fun lies. If you've never ridden an R6 before, the neck ringing abuse it both demands and thrives on in equal measure can initially be a little alarming. Once the shock's worn off, it just becomes addictive. Anyway, enough of Yamaha R6s because it's time to go over to Louise. Now, if you're looking to join the thousands of other two-wheeled motorists out there on the road, you might be a little spoilt for choice out there in the bike showrooms. A cruiser may be too fat, a scooter may be too slow, and a sports bike's only happy when it's going flat out. What do you do? Well, have you ever considered one of these? A supermoto? Over the last few years, the supermoto bike market has grown tremendously in the UK. Riding the crest of this new wave are Blackburn-based bike manufacturers, CCM. And to celebrate their 30th anniversary, they've put together this stunner of a bike. Looking at the bike logically, the high seat gives a great view for filtering through urban traffic, whilst the loud, remus-made pipe will ensure anyone within a two-mile radius is aware of your imminent arrival. As for stopping, well, that's well taken care of by a sizeable single disc up front, bitten hard by a chunky four-pot Brembo caliper. Half crosser, half street bike, you won't find a stranger looking beast out there on UK roads. But most of all, it's light, it's agile and it's great fun. It's got these inverted telescopic forks, a pokey little Rotax motor. But most of all, you know when you step back and look at this bike, it's styled like a, a praying mantis. It's cool, isn't it? The single cylinder engine is, however, something else. With an evocative growl and plenty of stomp, the 600cc thumper pulls hard from the very bottom of its rev range, slinging the bike forwards with plenty of torque. With only 57 horsepower to hand, you won't be seeing off any 600 sport bikes in a straight line. But on the up, you won't get the sanitised sound and feel that the newest Japanese offerings bring. The motor is awesome and for giving the short first gear, which will make the word wheelie a regular word in your vocabulary, the torque makes this motor feel like a hundred horses 
are sat within its 135 kilo frame, which is very lightweight for a bike. As with every road-going supermotor, the suspension is quite soft to standard, but remains comfortable and progressive. The white power shock at the back is fully adjustable and allows you to customise the ride characteristics. The problem is the bike's finish is a little unfinished. CCM's attention to detail is a little lacking. You get the feeling they've concentrated on the main cycle part. There's good wheels, good brakes, great frame, but everything else around the bike is, well, a bit of an afterthought. So let's see how it shapes up in the ratings then. Street cred, a massive 9 out of 10, because you know that the rider of this bike is having such a laugh out there, be it on-road or off-road. And let's face it, it's not the same kind of cred as a Ducati, but you just know that you're not really going to get yourself into trouble on a bike like this, are you? Now, the engine and the chassis on this bike are an absolute delight. It's light to steer, and let's face it, you'd have more grins per smiles on this bike than many of the mid-range sports bikes, and you'd probably see them off through a series of mid-range corners, a worthy 9 out of 10, I reckon. Now, as for the comfort factor, I reckon 6 out of 10. I mean, it's comfy enough for a short commute to work, but you really wouldn't want to go riding through Europe on it. It's roomy enough for two, so you could take a pillion for a, a short journey. But the problem is, you can't get your leg over very easy. I almost need a crate to stand on. Oh, <laughs> and when I am on, I can only just touch the floor with the tips of my toes. But CCM have assured me that there is a slightly shorter version. Now, as for the build quality on the CCM, can't go any further than 6 out of 10. It's not the fact that the parts aren't good. They are. CCM have used really good components. The problem arises when they put them all together. They don't seem as though they've refined the bike properly as yet, but I'm sure they'll get there. So for under five and a half grand, this bike is directly in the firing line of other manufacturers like Husqvarna and KTM, who all produce a similar bike to the R30. But I do have to say, there's all slightly better finished off, which is a shame, really, for the little lean green fighting machine Blackburn bullet. I think we're going to have to give it seven out of ten. CCM R30, um, super motard, right good laugh, can embarrass quite a few bigger sports bikes on the twisties. Not too fast on the straights, get plenty of vibration, bit of wind blast, but fun all the less, get it on some A roads, some B roads, and you're really looking to embarrass quite a few sports bikes with the handling they are spot on. Um, you slide it around bends, quite embarrass a few people and scare a few people at the same time. Engine, bit vibey again, but nonetheless still quite a power power plant does well for most things. Uh, and CCM R30, I've heard it's quite fast, but once again, I've not really had a chance to use one. Welcome back to the Yamaha R6. Now the best bit about this bike's motor at the track is that the rev limiter is 1000 RPM higher than it is on any of the rest of the class. Now what this means is you can often hold single gears for longer through corners. So where maybe on a CBR or a GSXR, you'll be either between ratios or needing an upchange somewhere mid-corner, on this, you can often pull straight through. Not only does this make life easier, it also makes your lap times a little bit quicker. But what the R6 gains at the track with its motor, it can lose in its chassis. Hey, you what? Isn't this bike renowned for demon race-like handling straight out of the crate? Well, yes, it is. And rightly so, the chassis is simply as mad as the motor and makes the R6 the fastest steering production bike you can buy this side of an Aprilia RS250. The trade-off for this razor sharp steering is one seriously frisky front end on this little bike. You pin the throttle, the motor's heading into its top end, that power kicks in, front end goes light and she starts shaking about. To be honest, at this point, you probably can't get too much more of the power down without crossing that fine line between head shake and tank slap. But the remedy is a simple one. Get yourself a quality, fully adjustable steering damper. I promise you won't regret it. I used the top yoke mounted Sprint one on my long-term R6 last year, and on the R6 I endurance raced a couple of seasons back. And in both cases, it calmed the bike down nicely.
tramping on hard at the track, the R6 front end can feel slightly vague when buried deep in a corner. But to be honest, unless you're challenging for a national championship, this really isn't a problem. And everywhere else, the front end is spot on. At the rear, the shock is very well composed. And to be honest, for a standard item, it is pretty much excellent. One part of the R6 that can't be faulted is the brakes. They are sheer quality, taking top class honours alongside the newly revamped CBR600 stoppers. Then there are the dinky touches that abound on the Yamaha, like those Starship tail lights, the quick release number plate assembly, for track days only of course, and the gear linkage that runs through the frame in a strangely pleasing and super compact manner. All of which make this a beautiful package to own, cherish and crash the spuds off on a daily basis. For some, the R6 may simply be too mad too often. But if you're looking for the biggest thrills per pound with a 600cc insurance tag, then it could be just what you're after. Anyway, enough of our sixes, over to Rod. The trouble with sports bikes, of course, is there's only two things you can do with one. You can either ride it very, very quickly, or you can pause in the car park. Now, if you take the engine from a big sports bike and plonk it into a massive trail bike chassis, a whole new vista of options opens up in front of you. You can ride slow. You can ride fast. You can ride majestically upright in rush hour traffic on a bike that looks capable of crushing the occasional wayward Mondeo with a glance. Triumph's Tiger has been showing the way since it was launched more than 10 years ago and has proved increasingly popular with our continental cousins. Now this latest revised version with a detuned 955 engine is set to win new converts and take more sales away from the increasing numbers of big Japanese trailers. For the Tiger, Triumph have softened the tune of their superb water-cooled triple engine, which now pumps out 104 brake horsepower. Not bad for a trail bike. More importantly, the engine now makes 72 foot-pounds of torque at only 6,200 RPM. The result is a hugely tractable engine, with lots of usable urge at real-life speeds. Combine this with a dry weight of only 215 kilograms, and a light, easy steering geometry, and you have a recipe for almost unlimited fun in a very practical package. The 24 litre fuel tank gives a whopping range between fuel stops, and that trendy nose fairing does an admirable job of keeping the rider comfortable and dry. But what really grabs you about the Tiger is the way it looks. This bike looks great from any angle, these Tiger Stripe graphics reinforcing the don't mess with me attitude. The lean, purposeful stance makes lesser bikes cower as you pass. Their final impression of this huge silencer like a rocket launcher, threatening rearward retribution. And the real surprise for those unused to big trailers is just how versatile a bike the Tiger is. You can tour on it, you can commute on it, you can cross continents on it, and you can even scratch on it at a push. The one thing you may struggle to do is ride it off-road, where it really is a bit big and heavy to cut it with the Micros and Montessas. It's comfortable, smooth, reliable and well built, and it has an engine which is rapidly gaining cult status. But performance, eight. It's not as fast as a Fireblade, or a 955 for that matter, but what it loses in speed it makes up for with plenty of oomph. This year's revised engine makes gobs of usable torque at low and mid-range speeds, and power delivery is smooth. The bike handles with competence and poise. 
It's a great all-rounder. Comfort 9. I just love the tall upright riding position of a big trailer. It gives great vision and feels comfortable enough to ride all day. The Tiger's seat is a little firmer than some of the opposition, which some will prefer. There's plenty room for a passenger who gets well positioned pegs and grab handles. Build quality, 9 out of 10. The bike's well thought out and well put together and standards of finish are high. The lack of decorative chrome work on the Tiger should make it easy to keep it looking smart and I love this metallic green paintwork. Black is available as an option for the less extrovert. Value for money, seven. At £7,599, the Tiger goes head to head with Suzuki's new V-Strom and the Honda Varadero, both were the opposition. The Tiger is competitively priced and well worth considering. Depreciation may be slightly less than a Japanese bike too. Street cred, eight out of 10. The Tiger has an impressive presence in traffic and it will wow the crowds in the local supermarket car park. It's sufficiently unusual to be distinctive and it wears the logo of one of the world's greatest marks. All in all, the Tiger delivers what it promises. I'll have a green one, please. Tribe Tiger, uh, one of the typical big trails bikes, very like the XRV 750 from Honda. Uh, things have moved on now by way of Varadero, the V-Strom, it's got some uh, main contenders in there. Still a good bike for very little money, uh, good engine, as always engineered by Triumph. The Triumph Tiger, it's, that's a monster of a bike that. Um, you never get me at my size on one of them, you need someone like 18 stone bloke to ride one of them, just to keep it low on the floor, it's too much power. Big triple, plenty of torque. I find the motor a bit, little bit thumpy for me, a little bit too vibra, a little bit too much vibration on it. But good motor, nice, powerful, plenty of torque, low down, very easy to ride as well. Um, I find the suspension a little bit soft, but again, uh, Triumph, renowned for suspend, being really good suspension. Um, but they did get it a little soft for my liking, but I'm like 15 stone, so it probably could do with a little bit of stiffening up. But again, nice all-round bike. Good for anything, nice for commuting. And now back here in R6 land, it's conclusion time. Starting with performance. I'm gonna give this little puppy a nine out of 10. She's got one of the sharpest chassis around. She's got the class leading brakes and an absolute firecracker of a motor. Good score. Comfort, it's a six out of 10. To be honest, your upper body doesn't get too bad a deal of things, although it is a little heavy on your wrists, but your legs will get squashed up because the pegs are quite high on the R6. Also, that pillion perch is pretty much a nightmare. Build quality, it's an eight out of 10. Having run one of these last year as a long-term test bike and the year before as an endurance racer, I can safely say that the days of sports Yamahas dissolving in a sea of rust at the first sign of winter are over in the case of this bike. Value for money, it's a seven out of 10. The R6 loses a few points for being the most expensive bike in her class by a couple of hundred quid, but she gains it back by still being a 600, which means insurance isn't gonna be a complete crippler. Street cred, it's another eight out of 10. The R6 has got a bad boy image all right, thanks to that frisky front end and that manic motor. As well as that, there's some sharp styling, which tops the whole package off very nicely indeed. Yamaha R6, uh, handling unsurpassed, absolutely brilliant. Uh, good fun to ride, uh, nice performance bike. Uh, I can't beat it really, superb. Um, yeah, the Yamaha R6, in comparison to with most of the other 600s across the range, um, not definitely one of the best ones. Seriously lacking the fuel injection, I think. Uh, a lot, lot of power at the top end, but not really much usable power lower down. Um, don't quite do it for me, in all fairness. The Yamaha R6, now that's my bike. I've got one of them, it's a nice one, a red and white one. Um, 
exhaust is beautiful on it. It's really loud. I can throw that bike everywhere. Everywhere. It's really light on, especially for me, um, nine and a half stone, five foot six. Perfect bike for me, that. The R6 is a really nice bike as well. I've, rode, I've owned an R6. Uh, I would say for people who are going into sports bikes, uh, R6 is a really good bike to start out on for beginners. It's light, it goes through bends really well. Motorway as well. Overall, it's a really excellent bike as well. I've got a Yamaha R6. Uh, love it really. It steers really quick. Plenty powerful enough. Uh, probably the best bit is the handling. I had no problems with it yet, done about 7,000 miles and uh, just basically really chuffed with it. Uh, came down from a bigger bike to this. Uh, thought I might not like a 600 but it's been great and uh, wouldn't go up to a bigger bike again really. Sadly that's it for this week's edition of Bike File. But join us next week when we'll have some more fine motorcycles for you to enjoy.